get you some radio. If you suck at internal customer service, how in the holy heck do you expect to have good or great external customer service? If, if you suck online, it's pretty sure you're going to suck offline too. I mean, they're just, it's just the reality. So if you're going to run a business and you've got, you're responsible for people, team members, and, and I'm telling you what, people make everything happen and you can't take it for granted. People will make or break your business and they can make your business greater than you even possibly think if you invest in them. And, and it's not about just the money. It's, it's about the relationship. It's about lifting them up. It's about putting them on the path for their success, not your success. Um, and when you realize that you can let go of some of these thought processes of, you know, I got to do it my way, and you really start to empower people and move it, you see, wow, things just become easier. Yeah. People feel, people want empowerment. They want to be trusted to make decisions and, and help the business and contribute to it. And if you're not willing to do that, you're going to run into some limitations. Now, 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 now your weekly dose of inspiration, inspiration, perspiration, perspiration, and just the right amount of bull defecation. Ah! The Get You Some Radio Show with your host, the vice president of making shit happen, Terry Lancaster. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back to the Get You Some Radio Show. I'm your host, Terry Lancaster. And before I forget, I want to remind you, you got to subscribe. If you want to subscribe, it's super easy these days. I'm all technological and everything. All you have to do is text the word Terry. Text Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, to 33777. Text Terry to 33777 so you never miss another episode of the Get You Some Radio Show. And boy, howdy, do we have a show for you today. Now, before anybody's concerned, if, you, if you're watching this on video as opposed to listening on, uh, on your, your podcast program, if you're watching this and you notice that I'm looking a little less chipper than normal, if my eyes don't have my normal sparkle, if I have a few more bags under my eyes, and maybe it's not like I'm not getting enough sleep, it's because I didn't get enough sleep uh, this weekend. I, 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 read, uh, I read today's guest's book yesterday, and uh, it's called Do More, Get More, The Road to You by Dan Moore. Dan Moore is going to be on the show in just a minute. And I read the book over, uh, over the weekend. I was reading it last night. It ended up staying. I swear this is true. I was up until four o'clock in the morning because I read this one line. It says that success is a byproduct of self-awareness. Success is a byproduct of self-awareness. So I was up in the, till four o'clock in the morning trying to figure out who the heck I am and what the heck do I want? Where am I going to go in and how, and how, do, how do I get there? So I, I, was, I was contemplating everywhere around all about that all, all night, talk, thinking about what I'm going to talk to Dan about and, and how are we going to do this. But this, today is all about finding you. And we're going to be back with Dan Moore, the author of Do More, Get More, to talk about that right after this. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're struggling to be perfect, hoping for average and settling, for anything less than the life you were born to lead. You can do better, better. Self-help for the rest of us. The groundbreaking new personal development book from Terry Lancaster. Get your free copy today at terrylancaster.com. So you know how in all the commercials they have the fast talking guy at the very end and he gives you all the important information? Well, I'm gonna give you the disclaimer right up front. This book will not make you a millionaire or a movie star. It's not going to give you six-pack abs, and it's not going to give you gleaming white, perfectly straight teeth. But perfection is overrated. It's a fantasy, and it doesn't exist in nature. What this book will do is give you proven strategies for making your actual life better. You can build a better life, one better decision at a time. Better. Self-help for the rest of us. Get your free copy today at terrylancaster.com. Dan, my brother, how the heck are you, man? Hey, I am fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on today. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Um, I, I ask, how are you? How are you? But maybe I should have asked, who are you? Who, who are you? What, what are you? And what the heck does this mean? Success is a byproduct of self-awareness. That's, that's, that's a big bite. Uh, you know, sometimes we gotta, you gotta throw the hook out there in the uh, real event, right? 
Uh, well, I'm Dan Moore, uh, president of Vistadash, a marketing uh, analytics and attribution software platform in the automotive space. Uh, but also, you know, grew up uh, in the car business, started selling cars at 19. Um, so, you know, I've been in automotive majority of my life. I think it's getting to the point to where, you know, I think many of us have started laughing going, man, we're like the senior citizens. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, uh, and to say that at like 44, I'm kind of like, man, time has flown. <laughs> Uh, but you know, Hey, I, uh, you know, I embarked on this whole book thing. It was something that I, I kind of, um, kind of kept ignoring or pushing aside, like, Hey, you know, not now, now's not the time, you know, me being kind of an introvert in style. It's like, once you put one of these bad boys out there, you're out there, there's no recall. So, you know, spending a lot of my career in, you know, automotive and in software, some behind the scenes, some up in front, it, at least it's been controlled. Um, but when you release a book, there's no control <laughs> and, uh, especially something like this, you know, it's something I've, I've been very passionate about. It's kind of one of those things where, you know, I may have wrote this for myself 20 some odd years ago. And it's funny when you go down this road, you don't think about it. And then as you read through the final product, you're like, okay, well, I just wrote what I should have had in my hands at that time, <laughs> you know, and it's so relatable, but I, I love the fact you picked up on, on that one, um, you know, we, we get hung up in a lot of the different things that we put labels on, whether it's success or money or acknowledgement. And, and it's so funny when you really look at those things and you start ripping them down, it's not, that's not the fundamental thing that's in front of you. It's a byproduct. And in the end of it, if you really take it all the way down to the root, it just goes back to you. So you are, are, are everything behind these byproducts that happen. And I think that we get, you know, hung up on it. It's easy to, I mean, given just today's state of social media and how things are, it's like, I, I think we almost sometimes feel like we're just failing at life because we see so much grandioso. It's like, oh, 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 I, I, I need that thing. I want that thing, I, this and that. And so we, we chase words like success and, and hustle and grind. And it's like, they're, they're just words. You are, are the thing that's going to drive that momentum and, and really get it going. And if you're, you know, if you're not there, in yourself and, and looking in the mirror every day and, and, and challenging that reflection, you're going to get lost and you're going to get beat because it's not about who's, you know, who's competing around you. It's about you competing with you. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, that's, that you, that's why I said, we, I told you earlier, we're on, on the same page of this because I, I tell everyone, I, and I say this all the time, I'm not in competition with anyone, but me, there is no one on the face of the earth that's playing the game I'm playing. I'm, 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 in 100%. This. I, 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 I'm just for me. So being aware, being, having that awareness, what, what, what does that mean? What is the awareness we need to have of ourselves to, to drive ourselves to, uh, to, to compete with ourselves? Yeah, I, I think some of it's, you know, sometimes just frankly calling BS on yourself and challenging what's priority and, and, and where you're at. I mean, for example, I think I talk about it in the book. I talk about weight loss. You know, there was a time in my life where it's like, oh, I need to go to the gym. I need to do this. You know, I need to eat better. And, and I kept saying it, but nothing was happening. It was a priority, but it wasn't happening. And, and there just comes an honesty point where you look in the mirror one day and go, okay, listen, I keep talking about it. Nothing's going to happen. It's clearly not a priority right now. I need to be honest and say, I'm parking it. I can't conquer this because I'm not doing anything about it. I need to get through these core initiatives that I'm focused on, whether that's, you know, career, family, what, something else is driving. And I think that the honesty is, is you can't do everything at once. It, it, it's, it's just the kind of recipe for disaster because you're only going to be halfway in. Um, and, and so when you start getting that focus and you're honest going, Hey, listen, I'm gonna park it, but I'm gonna come back to it. And I did come back to it, but I had to be honest and stop talking about it. Cause I was, it was just noise. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of times we do a lot of talking, um, and, and we miss the action part, you know, even the release of the book, it was funny. A lot of my friends are like, you wrote a book. And it was, it was kind of funny. Cause I'm like, I didn't say anything. Right. And, and it's kind of been kind of my mantra of, I'm not going to talk about it till it's done. Because I, I think that we get too much into the talking and we forget the, the do part. So for me, it was like, I'll tell you when I'm done. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, it's, all, it's all about the action. And I think that we, it's, it's kind of like the old saying, if you try to please everyone, you're going to please no one. If you try to do everything, right. you're not going to get anything done. And we all have these 200 point checklists of stuff we're going to do. This is, the, 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 this is my to-do list and it's got 200 things on it, but right. nobody ever does you know, 197 of them. And, and correct. And I think and, the problem is because those are wish lists and not to do lists. We make wish lists. 
Well, and, and we, we seem to think we can just take everything on. There's this whole, you know, um, I, mean, I mean, think about it, just coming up like, oh, I can do everything, never say no, like take it all on, on you know, I can multitask. Uh, we've become so, so you know, slated with this whole multitask thing. And it's like, all you're doing is doing a lot of things not really well. Right. I, I mean, you, you look at the, the, the real people out there that are leading this, you know, whole different lifestyle and, and doing things, you look at the Warren Buffetts, you look at the Bill Gates, you look, they're very focused and, and very diligent in the task at hand. They don't get sidetracked or swayed. They stay the course. They may make a couple pivots based on where they're trying to, to get to, but they're very focused and don't let a lot of noise or distraction take them off course. So, so that brings me, to, I want to talk about over-focus because you said in one of the things you said in the book that unhappiness in one area of your life will bleed over into other area of your areas of your life. And we end up talking on this show a lot about the work-life balance thing. So let's talk about that, how, <laughs> how un, unhappiness bleeds over and work-life balance and, and, and yeah. what, what all that means and, and, uh, and how to deal with that. Yeah. So, I mean, work-life balance, I love that one. It, it's such a corporate you know, little statement, we provide work life balance. And if we all sat down and, and we were just honest for a minute, there, there's one piece we have, if we if we have kind of, if you will, like the, the so called balance, right? So you've got work on one side, life on the other, it constantly does this. The, the funny thing is, the balancing point is you, you have to make the decision in that day, who's who's going to get the balance of, of, of the money, you know, I, I kind of looked at work life balance as, as like a a checking and savings account one day or the other you're going to overdraw in one than the other or you might be at a net equal or you know one may be completely depleted i i don't know but it depends on the day and, and i think balance is really predicated on you being able to understand and, and move in those moments um to really drive happiness but when it comes to yourself and that point of not being happy it's you, you can't have a successful marriage if you're not happy yourself you can't have success in business if you're not happy yourself. And cause and effect in all of those categories will bleed over. You can't say, hey, I go to work and I have a bad day and something happens and it doesn't come home with me. That It comes home with you. Yeah. I, I just call that, as one part of the book, I just call that denial. You know, <laughs> we, we can choose to be in denial or we can say, listen, I've had a bad day at work and I know I've got to figure out how to kind of bring myself back in so that my family doesn't, doesn't pay the price. And hey, we're humans. And, and sometimes that's going to happen. But I think in the moment in checking and balancing yourself and realizing you on that drive home, like, Hey, I had a rough day today. Today sucked. Um, I'm going to go home and I'm going to focus on the things that bring me joy. Those levers that lift me up versus walking in the door and bringing everybody down to where I'm at. I have to walk in and enjoy my three daughters greeting me with happiness and eager to see me and tell me about their day. And I've got to, I've got to suck that in and, and, um, let that lift me up. And I, I think that, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, well, it's easier said than done, Dan. hundred percent. But anything worth anything takes work and effort. And as you start to work through that, not going to say you're not going to slip occasionally, but you start finding more happiness, you start getting more traction and you realize that even in the moments, those things that, that kind of hit you and aren't the most pleasant, you're like, wow, that's, that's nothing in comparison. Right. I mean, how many times have you seen the, the, you thought you had a bad day meme or post on Facebook and you're like, I thought I had a bad day until I saw that. <laughs> it's kind of that same thing. Once you, once you just kind of think that in your mind of like, no matter how hard you get kicked, somebody else is getting kicked harder. And, and you've got to kind of lift up and, and even take a minute to kind of step back and go, look where I'm at and look what I've accomplished or look at my amazing family, find those things that you draw into because everybody's heart beats a little bit different, but you've got to, you've got to pull those in versus pushing them away. The, uh, the thing I like in the book, I, 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 I try not to talk about work-life balance again, because I think it's a buzzword and a, it's a misnomer and, and everyone juggles as an excuse to make people work harder. But, um, <laughs> but cause I don't talk, so I don't talk about work-life balance. I prefer to talk about alignment. And when you've got all your ducks in a row, when your family life and your business life and your personal life and, and yep. your spiritual life and everything, and everything is on the same page, pulling in the same direction, you get twice the horsepower. And you had the perfect example of that in your book. You were, you, you were having some struggles at work. Uh, things were going, going poorly at this point. And uh, you were bringing it home and, and, and your wife called you on it. Said, Dan, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's work stuff and you're bringing it to here. 
because she was in line. She knew where you wanted to be and she knew what the problem was. So yep. that you, your work-life balance was being upset because you got out of line, but because your personal life was aligned, she pulled you back in. I thought that was Well, great. and that's the beautiful thing about having an ecosystem, right? Like I think that a lot of times, you know, we, a lot of times we take things on ourselves saying, oh, I'm going to charge the hill by myself. I'm going to charge this hill and there we go. And, you know, for those that are married and, and, and have kids and are in relationships, it's a team sport. And, you know, every once in a while, you got to have your BS called out. You got to have an accountability coach. We talk about it, you know, you, you, you go to the gym and you get a trainer. Why? Because you need the accountability. You do things like the 75 hard challenge because you want accountability. So why shouldn't you have accountability in your own home? Yeah. Why, why? I mean, that's the whole point. There, there's days that you got to get called out. I mean, if you're into the denial loop, how do you know you're in denial? Someone, you've got to have that accountability. So yeah, when Kelly called me out on that, she goes, hey, you're kind of mourning. And I'm like, huh, I never thought of that way. And, and the first step of mourning is denial. And man, I'll tell you what, that's the vortex. Cause you'll just keep circling around in that bag. I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm totally fine, yeah. but you're not. Yeah. And everybody else around you goes, you're saying it to them and they're going, but it's that, it's that ecosystem of, of your friends and your family. They go, Hey, you're not fine. You're kind of being a jerk or other choice words <laughs> right and and i need you to i need you to hone it back in and, and what is going on and then and then the dialogue comes but when, when you have the right people in your life they come at you in in the right place so you're never like oh shut up you don't know what you're talking about or some kind of defensive argumentative approach comes out of that because they're saying hey you're in a bad mood i mean the, the delivery in that moment was exactly the way it needed to be it was my it was my best friend my soulmate saying hey you're not okay and, and, and I'm watching you and I think this is where you're at. And it's like in that moment, holy, holy smokes, you're right. And then comes, all right, let's go back to the mirror. Let's have a little one-on-one -on -one time, Danny, and, and let's start nipping this out. Because it isn't the world that's the problem right now. It's just that reflection looking back to the problem. Well, I, I got news for everyone. And I say this as, as a lifelong entrepreneur, I've, 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 I've never, haven't had a real job since, since I can't remember, but uh, it's all a team sport, every single bit of it from, 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 from sun up to sunrise. It's, it's all 100%. about, it's all, it's all about who's on the team and who's, who's playing, who's with you. And uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's all, it's all in who you surround yourself. So I'm like, I got another buzzword for you. Everyone talks about work-life balance. Here's another thing. And I've, and I've been kind of irritated about this. So I was, ex I was excited when I saw this in your book. I'm not sure you're quite on uh, exactly where I'm at on this, but even just somebody hinting at it makes me so happy. I think Simon Sinek ruined the world. I mean, he, uh, he, he made, he made everyone about all about why. And everywhere I go, everything is all about why. And then I saw the, these words on your page that the why isn't near as important as the what. Yeah. What, 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 why is the undertone? What? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it's funny because, I, I mean, I like Simon Sinek. By, I mean, I think it's, it's brilliant in the context and, and where he's going. What's interesting, though, is I read a couple studies and they talk about, uh, I've been really fascinated and, and I probably missed my calling and I joke about it is I should have just gone into psychology. <laughs> um, but car business has a little bit of psychology to it, which is probably why I fell in love with it. But what's interesting is, is that if you think about why, why is designed as a curious, it's curiosity. And as a child, why is very, very much a curiosity span. And then as we get older and we start to get told no, and we start to understand like limitations or so-called placed limitations, why turns into why me? Why this? Why, it's not curiosity anymore, it's pity. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that when you get to that point, there's a, there's a natural shift to what? And, and that's why I, I kind of phrased it that way. And, and I do, I think what is a very, uh, what is very powerful when it comes to one key initiative that we, we sometimes don't focus on in life and that's taking action. What is the action? You can why yourself all day long and you're not whying out of curiosity because we forgot to do that. And, and so, you know, I challenge people to find their inner child and, and go back to the why of curiosity because we have only put limits on ourselves. And when you realize that they're only self-imposed limits, that's when the magic happens. But the what helps you unlock those steps because what has you stuck in the moment? What is holding you back, right? 
what do I need to do to have a better marriage, uh, more income? What, what is always that question? What is a, a question of, I think of, of inner hunger? Like now you're hungry. What does it feed me? I want, I want to eat, you know? And, and I, I really kind of play on what and why quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what I came from it, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was because everybody's all why, but I still think that it, it's one of those things of not everybody's gotten the full definition of what why really represents. And that should be the curiosity of growth. How, why, why is something working or not working? How can I make it better? Why? And, and just going back to curiosity, when you get there, I think why matters, yeah. but if you're having why pity party, you got to get to what? Well, I, th- I think I think why matters. You, 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 everyone has their mo- motivations, and you need to understand your own motivations and, and biases, and everyone else's motivations and biases as best you can. The the why the why does tend to be circular, though. Oh, yeah. why, why, why is circular, and, and I'm I'm all about what what's next. What do we do now? <laughs> yeah. So, well, especially for the entrepreneurs that are watching and stuff like that, the the sales you know sales people that are watching it. You got to get to the what because the why is just going to put you into a spin cycle. Uh, and, and I think that that's critical, especially for like that young salesperson that's trying to get into it. You hit the why, you're not going to be in sales very long because you're going to why yourself out the door. Right. You got to get into the what. What do I need to do to be better? What do I need to leverage to get more and do more when it comes to being the best at what I'm doing? And then what do I need to do to get to those next steps that I want to, whether it's you want to get into management or just be the best salesperson there is on the face of the planet, whatever that what is, that's the focus. And same for the entrepreneurs. What do I want for my business? What is that next evolution of the business? What's that next evolution of for me? You know, and, and what is that perfect mix of my ecosystem running family, friends, so on, and at the same point in time running a business? Because if you just do one and don't have, you're, you're gonna get, you're just gonna fall out of tune and whack and it's gonna become very challenging to your point. You gotta have a well, almost like, you know, synced ecosystem that's flowing together because it's only gonna make you stronger and better through the journey because we all know it's hard work, right? Being an entrepreneur is hard work. <laughs> Being, having a career is hard work. Having a marriage is hard work. And I think that's where everybody's being fed a lot of stuff too. And, and, you know, even to your point of, you know, the why statement, I mean, I think a lot of people are getting fed this. It's just so easy. You click here, follow Gary V, do this. It's so easy. Did anybody take a look at what he did to get to where he's at? Right. You take a look to where Grant Cardone get to where he's at. Tony, when you, Take a second, stop looking at right now after a decade plus decades of work and, and, and grind that these people put in, it didn't get it done in 30 seconds, folks. It was decades of hard, hard work to reach the platform that they have today. So to think you're going to do it in a couple months, I mean, that's cute. Yeah. E- easy is good business. Easy sells pretty good. If you, if you know, if you're selling the easy button, every, everybody wants a slice. So. <laughs> why, why do you think there's so many diets out there? Easy sells. So right? you, you, you talked about the car business and, and I was really surprised because you, I was, um, you, you only mentioned the car business one time in the book that I could tell. And, and that was when you're talking about the concept of working from the inside out that, uh, and, and again, this is all the holistic approach that a dealership, if you're, you know, if, if you can't treat your salespeople poorly and your customers great, and you can't treat 100%. your salespeople better by treating your customers great, you have to start with the salespeople and you have to start with you from the inside out when you're trying to improve you. A hundred percent. I mean, it, it, it's funny. I, I didn't talk a lot about the car business, the book, because I really wanted the book to be seamless flatline across in any vertical. Um, and everything I talk about can be put into personal, put into business, put into faith. Like, I mean, it literally hits on, I think just about every aspect of of life itself and really kind of getting into you. Um, But I would say this, and and it's been a statement, you know, if, if you suck at internal customer service, how in the holy heck do you expect to have good or great external customer service? If, If you suck online, it's pretty sure you're going to suck offline too. I mean, they're just, it's just the reality. So if you're going to run a business and you've got, you're responsible for people, team members, and, and I'm telling you what people make everything happen and you can't take it for granted. People will make or break your business and they can make your business greater than you even possibly think if you invest in them. And it's not about just the money. It's, it's about the relationship. It's about lifting them up. It's about putting them on the path for their success, not your success. Um, and when you realize that you can let go of some of these thought processes of, 
you know, I got to do it my way. And you really start to empower people and move it. You see, wow, things just become easier. Yeah. People feel, people want empowerment. They want to be trusted to make decisions and, and help the business and contribute to it. And if you're not willing to do that, you're going to run into some limitations. Yeah. And in the car business there, the, uh, the people are your only differentiator that, you know, every Ford dealer in America looks pretty much like every other Ford dealer in America. Exactly. Sells everything exactly the same. So all this different is the people. So, yep. so from us, from a personal level, how, how does that inside out uh, prognosis apply to us getting better? Yeah. I, I mean, I think the prognosis us getting better and, and, you know, even I, I say this all the time, I'm a student and I always will be a student because to say that we'll master life, I mean, that's, that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. You know, um, we all meet different circumstances at different times. We interact with different people. Um, we path different career points, faith points, whatever that journey is. I think the, the road to you is essentially just each and every day a check in the balance. When you get up in the morning, you know, you generally brush your teeth, you better do certain things. And that's kind of what I say my mirror time. And it's that moment where I've got to look at myself and be honest. Am I better than I was yesterday? And some days there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses. Hey, I, I, you know, may have lost my cool with the kids last night. Like I need to ratchet that one a little bit and, and work on that one to be better. You know, there's always, Hey, you know, I, I think, you know, um, today, you know, I, I could have coached this employee a little bit differently, maybe delivering that in the tone that I did, probably I could have changed that or, Hey, you know, it's time. I need to focus on my health. I need to pour into myself a little bit more. Um, and, and I think that that's another piece too. When people think about the road to you, they're like, Ooh, that sounds very selfish. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on me. I'm taking away from everybody else. And, and I, I suffered that myself. Cause I was like, Oh, you know, how dare I think about myself kind of thing, you know? And the reality of it is, is if you're not your best self, how can you help anybody else? So you have to invest in yourself. Just like the same token of investing in your people. If you have employees, you invest in them and you invest in them because you want them to grow. Well, are you investing in yourself? Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned when you wrote the book that this, you thought maybe, that maybe this was the book you needed 20 years ago. And then at another yep. point, uh, the, I, think, I think maybe it's the last chapter of the book, you talk about eating your own dog food. And, and this is something I, <laughs> since, 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 I wrote, I, since I wrote my first book, I, I, sometimes I, I sit back and maybe I read something that I wrote three months ago and I forgot. And it's like, whoa, I need to do that. <laughs> That's good right. advice. I should do that. And I, 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 and I, I tell people all the time, I, I said, I think most writers and most, most people who are in the influence business, who are in, the, in your, or coaching yeah. or trying to help others along, the main person they're trying to help along is themselves. They, because they, they, their, their advice, all the advice comes back to, yeah, that's, that's really, really what I need to do. On the other hand, carpenters always have crooked houses. So, so why is that? And mechanics have broken cars. I mean, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because it, again, it goes back to eating your own dog food. I, I love that phrase because it, it makes you stop. And that was the intention with that, that phrase. You're like, eat my own dog food. Like that's gross. Like you, there's so many things that go through your mind when you first get to it, but it makes you stop and you go, okay, I'm curious. And, and the premise of eating your own dog food is really, everybody has an opinion, a suggestion, a thought, a whatever. And, and to your point, nine times out of 10, it's something that, you know, if they looked in the mirror and were honest, it's something that they need to eat themselves. So they need to eat. If you're willing to talk it, you need to be willing to eat it. And, and I think that that's a, a common theme is that a lot of times you, you get some advice, you're like, Hey, that's great advice. And then you actually take action on it. And then you see that person again and they go and, and they start talking. You're like, you do understand like three months ago, you told me this exact same thing, which actually now really applies to you. Yeah. Eat your own dog food. And, and, you know, there's times, I mean, I've been guilty of it. I mean, we, we all have great advice or great ideas or something. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of like you run into the door. You're like, oh, man, I should apply that. And, and so that was kind of how eat your own dog food came to be, because it really is, you know, what comes out of your mouth, you should be willing to eat it just the same as you're willing to give it. It's about the what. It's always about the action, which yep. leads us to the action step of the day. I, prom I promise everyone, uh, promise everyone if they watch the show, if they'll spend uh, half an hour with, uh, with my friends listening to us run our mouth and talk about the things I like to talk about and do the things I like to do. But, but all, all, all of my uh, viewers and listeners are salespeople and entrepreneurs. They eat what they kill. They can't waste 30 minutes a day just for entertainment. It has to get, be something in it for them. There has to be something in it for them. That's the Get You Some radio show. And the sum is health, happiness, and prosperity. So every guest that comes on the show has to answer one question. The question 
question is, what can a viewer, a listener do today, right freaking now, the minute they put down the phone, close the laptop, what can they do today to increase the health, happiness, and prosperity in their lives? Well, that's a fun one, and I like this one a lot because it does fit the premise of, of the book. Uh, and, and what I would say is simple. You want something quick and easy? Ask yourself one question today. Have I, in the last week, said, oh, that must be nice to someone? Meaning, have you had a friend, a family member, or something that maybe have bought a new watch or a new car or went on an amazing trip and you're like, must be nice to be you or said some kind of off comment. I want you to think about that for one second, because if the key is happiness, then first we've got to unpack your, your unhappiness. And if you see something like that, instead of saying, Hey, good for you. Congratulations. That's amazing. That's so awesome. If you're not coming from a place of joy, then, then you've got to digest your own stuff and, and start to realize, okay, why am I not happy? What is it about that that doesn't make me happy? Is it you realize you're not at a place in your life where you're at that level or you don't know how to get to that level or you're just stuck in the simple fact of I'm just cruising along and this is what I wanted to do, but that really upsets me. Well, then maybe that's not where you want to be right now. And I say, well, I would encourage you as we head into the new year, start unpacking your unhappiness to really set you on pace for the what 2020 has in store for you and back off the why. Brother, I have to tell you, I'm happy for you. I'm excited for you. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad to see you doing these things. And uh, so good, good on you, my friend. Uh, I appreciate if, that. If the folks wanted to get in touch with Dan, how would they get in touch with Dan in 2020? Easy. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can message me anytime I'm around. Uh, pick up the book. If you read it, enjoy it. Drop me a review on Amazon. Send me a DM. I'd love to talk to you if you have questions, whatever. Uh, you know, this book's just about helping help, helping others that have been in my situation or had some of the same things that resonate. And you know what? That was the whole premise of the book. I'm not looking to be some bestseller. I'm not looking for any type of money. I got a full-time job. I'm just looking as, hey, can I put this in the hand of somebody that needs it right now and it changes their life and that's a win for me. And I got a suspicion we could find you at a steakhouse at an automotive convention near you. <laughs> 100%, my friend. <laughs> All right, brother. Get you some radio. You've been listening to the Get You Some Radio Show. Subscribe today at terrylancaster.tv to hear more episodes, win valuable cash and prizes, and get free training to help you create an army of buyers who know, like, and trust you before they've ever even met you. It's a big, wide world, boys and girls. Get out there and get you some.